This is episode 27 of What's Been Better. This week, we're taking it back. Lori wants to know a little more about my formative years and how they got me here. So we're going retro. For those with the sensitive ears, we cuss for emphasis, not harm. Hey, Lori, hey. How you doing, Sylvia? I am good. Good, good, good. good. Well, that's lovely. So, what's been better? Um, Found a little work, a little side work to do, which was interesting. Wasn't prepared to, you know, you're looking for something, but you don't necessarily know what you're looking for. And then it just drops in your lap and you're like, hey, that's the thing I was looking for. Wow. That's cool. That's good. I needed, I needed to like occupy my brain a little bit. So that's what's been better. So what's been better for you? Um, I am putting into practice because life is about practice. Everything I, I teach and I, um, provide coaching on. Right. So, so right now I am practicing patience. Um, and I'm practicing, uh, learning to feel some other way besides annoyed. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Like, but that's rough, though. Like, it is a challenge. I feel like one emotion that is like the most difficult to not do is to be annoyed. Mm-hmm. Like, it's easy to like stop being angry, stop being, you know, sad, stop mm-hmm. being like all these. But it is difficult to not be annoyed. I know. So that's the thing, right? It's been a challenge for me. And so I'm thinking, what what can I feel to be honest with myself, right? Mm-hmm. And to recognize what's happening. And so um, my website just got f- demolished. I mean, I don't know if it got hacked or it just had a, um outdated theme or something. Mm-hmm. Some kind of technical shit that I really don't know about. Mm-hmm. I just like shit to work. You know, I understand. <laughs> yes. And so it's not necessarily working. It's but they call it broken. So I'm like, so I'm learning to be patient and recognizing. So as I was thinking about what can I feel instead of annoy, I'm like, things happen. Mm-hmm. Breathe. That's me being patient, right? To say things take time, you know, it's going to be okay. So I'm right now, I'm just giving myself affirmative words to use. That makes sense. It helped me. Yeah. So, yeah. so that is better because the old me would be crying or yes, just, just having a tantrum, an emotionally immature tantrum about something I can't control. And then I'm, because I don't understand it, then frustration sets up, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm just deciding you don't have to be annoyed about this. You that can makes just sense. recognize shit happens and it's going to be okay. And it's going to get better. So I'm learning to declare. That's another thing I'm learning to declare instead of allowing life to just happen, to just say it's going to be okay and believe my words. It will. Yeah. That makes, that makes more sense to go that route than to, yeah. Than to have cry fest because, you know, I'm like, let's just do cry fest. It's easier. Yeah, it it is. (laughs) But it doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't Mm. like, doesn't help. And you know what else? Okay. I, we were talking about the whole like women crying and men not being able to respond to it. Right. I finally saw it happen this weekend. Aww. I was having cry fest and Drew was kind of like, okay. Like, and I was like, oh shit, Lori said this is how this works. And it kind of washed over me of like, he's not being mean. He's not being anything. He, he It's literally like his wiring. Mm-hmm. so I was like oh okay how did so, you feel about that once you recognized it what what was different for you um it wasn't a thing of like being frustrated or disappointed or upset with him at that point mm-hmm. so and it was um I could hear you I could hear you a lot when you're like people don't make you anything they don't make right. you and I was like oh man okay 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 I'm listening I hear it I'm noticing so what I'm you, noticing. Okay. And what did you decide in that, those moments? Um, first of all, that it was okay for me to cry and be upset. Yes. About you don't owe anybody shit. About. Right. Right. 
but it was also um recognizing of like we really don't speak the same language all the time and we have to be patient and explain to each other with words not actions yeah because I think um with us it's not always like verbal communication that we don't understand between Mm -hmm. each other it's Mm -hmm. like the cues okay so like non-verbal okay are you shifting your cues yeah I'm trying to shift them to more like getting my words out but that's that's my difficulty is like I'm so in my head practicing or trying to like reach for the words almost Mm -hmm. that it takes me like a little bit more time to get it out okay but at least you are yeah I'm 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 working on it yeah and every step matters yeah that's that's awesome yeah so that's that's what's better and better for me like to just put in practice what I teach because I, I think that sometimes we can teach so much that we forget that we're also pupils, that we're also the student. I'm a, I'm a student of the things that I teach. And sometimes I'm good and sometimes I'm not good. And I'm learning not to beat myself up too, right? Yeah. And, and, and really live this life that I speak about. That makes sense. Yeah. And too, like how you can't be a teacher of something if you don't also practice the something. Absolutely. I am, I am my own student. I'm a student of so many, um, you know, educated intellectuals, everybody, you know, of things that I find that's helpful, mm-hmm. you know, the Bible, you know, pastors, friends, my children, like mm-hmm. I'm seeking wisdom from wherever I can get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So you said you had questions. Yes, I do. I'm going to yes, attempt to be transparent. <laughs> well, I think and I'm going be... to attempt to answer your questions the best of my ability because we all know that my memory is not the greatest. Yeah. Well, so. hopefully it's just an it's just a nice conversation about yeah uh, a retrospection of <laughs> of the past of the past <laughs> of but, a long um, time ago. Okay. So a long time ago, looks like what, 10 years, 12 years? 20. I started college 22 years ago. Wow. So what was that? 99? 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I know. The math just don't math all the time. Uh-uh, not even, not even. It it just goes by so daggone fast. Yes. But yes. we were talking last time with you and Drew, and as you were sharing with me your beautiful story, I just wanted to know more because it's like when you were telling me um the you know, the way y'all came together, mm-hmm. I think when he met you for the first time and you didn't remember him. No. <laughs> I said that's a whole story in itself. <laughs> So I think that's yes. where I want to start. If you're good with it, okay, <laughs> I, okay. I'm curious. Do you remember him uh, trying to console you that day in the uh, cafeteria? No, absolutely not. Like so. On so if if the listeners heard the episode, like, and I said I did not remember. I but you, do you remember the time? Do you remember the incident? I oh, Lori. There are so many days and weeks and months and years that are, I think, either locked away, erased locked out um they were just so much like they're they're um I don't want to say traumatic okay but they are dramatic okay that my brain is like absolutely not mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember that I don't but knowing myself and knowing who I was in those days I totally believe that that's what happened. Of course. Like, yeah. Like, I 100%. No. He's not going to say, oh, well, this happened when it really didn't happen. Yeah. 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 And I forgot to ask my friend about it because, like you said, I'm very close to this person. So I could just literally ask them and I forgot to ask them. But I I will ask them, like, why would you tell Drew to do this? Yeah, Uh, that would be good. I want to pull them in. But so to just share with the viewers who might not even know this story. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know Drew and Sylvia's love story. And so he said he met her for the first time 
in the cafeteria where, with, where they went to college and she was crying yes. uncontrollably. Yes. <laughs> and he went to try to console her and she was unconsolable. Yes. She, but Sylvia, you're saying you don't even remember that. I don't remember any of it. Like I could not tell you why I was crying. Mm-hmm. I could not tell you who I was crying about. Right. I couldn't tell you like if it was fall, if it was spring, I just right. know we were freshmen. Okay. Um, and that's, that's literally it. It had to be, mm-hmm. we had to have been there a little while. Like it wasn't like the first week of school or anything like that, because I didn't okay. have like, I wasn't crying inconsolably about like being homesick. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. That would okay. not be me. Uh-huh. Um, it had to be over some boy that I was wasting my time with. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Well, we'll skip over that one <laughs> as we get more because <laughs> because I don't have anything. You don't know. So no, I really, I really, honestly don't. I I was a party girl who wasn't going to class, who was mixing and matching with pretty much anybody that was giving me attention. Okay. Um, I think we have to preface this with like, I came from a predominantly white situation Okay, and going well, to Tuskegee and having mm-hmm. guys that were like forward thinking and trying to mm-hmm. do things. And of course, everybody is handsome mm-hmm. to say the like barest of minimum, everybody look good. Wow. And for them to be like, you look good. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> Give me all the attention, please. Yes, I'll take it. So I had spent, you know, kindergarten through 12 being the only of the only of the only. Oh, wow. How Well, let me just pull back. How did mm-hmm. you feel about that? As you recognize who you are, you're this African-American, you know, person who is in classes full of non-melanated people. So what um, was that like for you? How did you feel about that? For a long time... It did not bother me. Okay. It was a military family. So it was kind of like you saw some of everything anyway. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't a lot. And then there would be times where it was like, no, 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 you were really the only. Um, and then when we got to, so at the in elementary school, what was weird in California at the time is that they had combined classes. I think they had mm-hmm. like a serious teacher shortage. Oh, wow. So I kept being in combined class. I kept being in like first and second grade together, second mm-hmm. and third grade together. And I started reading late. So at the beginning, I was always in the lower class mm-hmm. and I would be mm-hmm. stuck and stuck and stuck. And then once I started to read, you couldn't stop me. Mm-hmm. So then it was like, they didn't want to push me forward. So my mom was like, okay, we can't do this. We can't do this. And we, the base was closing and we had to move off base. And so um, I think in that time, my mom was like, the best thing I can do right now is put my two youngest in um, Catholic school mm-hmm. and Catholic school wound up being awful. Oh no. <laughs> and awfully racist. Um, it's the first time I was called the N word ever in my life. By students or teachers? Yes, by students. Oh, okay. um, fourth grade. And so then that was just like, oh, damn, what are we going to do? So then fifth grade started out. I was just in a fifth grade class. And so my mom was like relieved. And I kid you not, the second week of school, they were like, oh, we need to combine fifth and sixth grade. And my mom was like, fuck. <laughs> so we moved to Arizona. And um, she didn't like that because of what? She because like it the- really was like holding me back in terms of like oh. school because those classes would be like huge, like 30 kids, oh. 40 kids. I see. And one teacher just. Oh, like, I see. That combination well, was yeah, just too was much. Yeah, like, yeah, I see what yeah. you're saying. Okay. So, um, so when we moved to Arizona in sixth grade, that's when it really became like very noticeable of you are the only Mm-hmm. and you are the only in these advanced classes and you're the only in this sport and you're the only and the only and the only. So it was kind of, it was annoying, mm-hmm. but then it was also, I just took it as like, I'm about to get culturally immersed in like whatever it is with these Indian kids and whatever it is with these Hispanic kids. Oh, wow. So you decided to join in. Yeah. 
So I had friends of everything at that point from seventh grade. Yeah, because sixth grade, I went to a different school than I went to seventh and eighth. So it's from seventh grade through high school, um, because I played sports, because I was into art, because I was into dance, because I was in like higher level classes. I just made friends with whoever. Tell me what difference that made instead of just singling yourself off. Um, it made a big difference. And it also, I was doing it out of spite because somebody said something to me and I intentionally said that's it I'm going to have all the friends I can and I'm going to be the opposite of what label this person wants me to be mm-hmm. you want to share they... that or you just kind of mm-hmm. okay no okay. I, okay. I'm gonna skip over that but okay. they said something to me that some days it creeps back up when I feel I lonely I see so was yeah. it a student or a person like a it was an adult person. okay okay it was an adult an adult told me that I wouldn't have any friends and I didn't have personality. Mm, and look at that. And I was like, fuck out of here with that. <laughs> right. Well, what do you know about that now that you didn't know before? Um, you know something about that now. It became a gift and a curse. Okay. It became a gift and a curse because I think that was the beginning of me seeking out attention and seeking mm-hmm. out to perform and to want everybody mm-hmm. to like me and to I see. Do and do and do and go and go and go mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. think about like, well, what do I like? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it became, I think, the beginnings of me doing everything I had to do instead of doing things I wanted to do. I understand. But and, and so re- the question was, I was trying to say, like, what did you learn now? Like, what do you know now about what that person said? from that person standpoint like you know how we say yeah when people say things it's really not about no. us per se it is sometimes people hurt and so they hurt and I you think know. it was I think it was said out of hurt I think it was said out of fear oh yeah I think um that they didn't realize it would backfire right so <laughs> so yeah so I um I I, I will say a good part of that is you can drop me anywhere and mm-hmm. I can talk my way into and out of mm-hmm. whatever. And you see, not so that's, right. So that's the good that came out of it mm-hmm. now. And as you are continuing to learn who you are, mm-hmm. maybe you add to that. You know? yeah. yeah. Because, because that personality trait, that whatever, whatever mm-hmm. it became, yeah. um, made the beginning of Abu Dhabi a piece of cake. Look at that. It made it breezy. I I didn't have to know the language. I didn't have to know the culture. I didn't have to know whatever because I was willing to be like, okay, wait, how do I do? Can you mm-hmm. show me? Is it okay? You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was just comfortable in it. Now, Look what at, it all yeah. became, mm-hmm. that's totally separate. Well, yeah, that's totally different. But even as you decided to go to Tuskegee, here you are um, a minority, so to speak, mm-hmm. throughout your um teenage childhood teenage years how did you decide to go to tuskegee oh <laughs> shit just, Lori. like um, how did how did you in tuskegee of all places i mean yeah. you could have gone to any hbcu or anywhere like I, how did you derive i could this? have kept my full ride to the university of arizona oh yeah absolutely i, I could have continued on the path that i was on like i was yeah. on a track to play softball at the Olympic level. I'm, I can believe it. And legitimately was like, no, I don't want to play anymore. Mm-hmm. And that can happen. And I was on a track to be like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, you know, I just had like mm-hmm. this life planned out of like, yeah. these are all the things I'm going to do. And U of A is a great school. Right. Especially for like what I wanted to study and what I wanted to like go into. And, mm-hmm. um, but I knew that like, it was just, you know, people are like, this is grade 13. You're just going to see all the same people from high school and you're just going right. to fall into the same thing. I could see it. Right. And so when my friends, it was just, you know, this pocket of black kids that were at my school. Um, there were only 13 of us in my graduating class. Wow. Out and of 626. Many... Mercy. So kids from seniors down to freshmen, however many black kids that was, we were all in like, we started a black student union. We mm-hmm. started a step team. We did all these things. 
um, because That's they awesome. just absolutely did not exist at the school. And yeah. you just made sure y'all were like, listen, it's 13 of us. Yeah. But we're going to multiply that shit by five. Because I want something. y'all to know. Right. We, we're going to be seen. We're going to we be known. <laughs> so um, in being in that group and being mixed in with those friends and, and their parents or their mentors or whoever, mm-hmm. um, a group of Motorola and Intel engineers were all Tuskegee graduates. Um, they had a Phoenix Tuskegee alumni chapter said, we want to take you guys on a college tour, a black college tour um, to expose us. Yeah. And so I was like, it's vacation at this point. Cause I had already gotten into U of A. Mm-hmm. I knew who my roommate was. I knew oh, everything. Wow. And so I was like, it doesn't matter if I go, I'm already in school. I'm just okay. going to what be on vacation. What time of year was this? Was this like March or like? It was October of 1999 and it was okay. So it was the week. fall of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. homecoming week of 99 at Tuskegee. And they took us to, we flew from Phoenix to Atlanta. We went to the whole AUC. I was like over the moon because I knew about um, a different world and I knew that it was mm-hmm. filmed and, mm-hmm. you know, the backdrop is at, at um, Spellman. And so it was just like so exciting. And okay. All so things. they took you out to Atlanta too. Yes. Okay. And then we got on a bus and we went to Fort Valley and I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> absolutely not. That was not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And then we drove past Tuskegee and we went to Montgomery and saw Alabama state, state. Uh-huh. Selma, Kind of did you know black yeah. history stuff nice and then, what did you think about alabama state oh it was a hell no oh, okay. okay it was an absolute hell no okay. um and anybody that's a stinger you, you would know why it was a hell no so <laughs> okay but um we left there and we pulled up on the campus and again clouds part sun comes down and i shit you not we were on campus 30 minutes and i said where's the admissions office wow okay tell me about that how how was that I like had a just feeling. like that you dropped it okay I had a feeling okay wow and before I had left my mom said take one transcript and take fifty dollars because it can't cost more than fifty dollars to apply to a school just in case you like it and I was like look at that oh, what? Look at- I don't oh you did it that. though right I said where's the admissions office and somebody took me to admissions and I filled out the paperwork to go to Tuskegee in October of 1999 and in November of 1999, I got in and I remember being on the campus and I called my mom and I said, mom, have you ever been somewhere where you just knew you were supposed to be? Like, it just feels like home. Mm. And she was like, no, what are you talking about? And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going here. And she was like, we'll talk about this when you get home. This, this call is expensive and hung up because it wasn't, you didn't have free long distance back then. Also, you you were speaking some shit that was not working for her ears. <laughs> no, it's like a, wait a minute. I didn't right. see you. I look now. That's too far. Yeah. Away. So also, Bye. also, <laughs> February of ninety nine, my dad had died. Oh. So, and I finally found all this out. Uh, I think when I was about thirty six, thirty seven, she didn't want me to go. She wanted me to stay, be close. I could come home every weekend and we could kind of like mourn together and do all these things together. And I needed to get the hell out of Arizona. So the whole flight there, she mm-hmm. was like, you don't have to go. You could just, we, we don't have to do this. It's fine if we just turn around and go back and whatever, if you're having uh, doubts. And I was just like, what is this lady talking about? Like, no, no, no. She was, now, you know, now okay. I know, Okay, but, um, but yeah, we were there 30 minutes and I don't know what I saw. I don't know who I saw. I just had a feeling. I was like, this is what I have to do. This is, I didn't know shit about like what programs they offered. I didn't know anything about Tuskegee. Nothing. Wow. What was your major going to be at, what did you say, Arizona State? Chemical engineering with an emphasis in uh, polymer chemistry and organic, in organic chemistry. Polymer chemistry. like I- Plastics. Oh, okay. Thank you. Materials. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You just flew right, right on my head. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so um, I think I I barely asked, do they have chemical engineering here? And they were like, yeah, of course. This is like the number one uh, graduate of 
engineers mm-hmm. and whatever right, field right. or whatever. So I was just like, cool. I didn't need all that. Right. I was already I sold. You, like, like speak, <laughs> say less. <laughs> or, say nothing because oh, I'm doing this. So, so I, um, so yeah, that was October. November I got in. Um, November, I had to figure out like, how do I get my money back? How do I change my financial aid? I had to tell my roommate, like, we can't be roommates. Like that didn't go over very well. It, it was just a lot of stuff. So I get it. But I was like, whatever I I'm doing this. Yeah. Well, when you said that you had a feeling, mm-hmm. do you remember where that feeling derived? Mm-hmm. Like, okay, where was that feeling? Um, literally where was the feeling Mm -hmm, or what mm -hmm. was the feeling both uh literally where the feeling was was when you come the gates weren't even built yet Mm -hmm. so what would be the gates now you drive through the gates you drive past the architecture building and you see the the monument to um booker t washington Mm -hmm. and you see the kellogg center which is like the hotel Mm -hmm. and you can kind of see like the vastness of the campus a little bit right back then you could okay and the chapels behind there it was just like beautiful right even though it was under construction at the time I was mm-hmm. just like what they were dirt roads right when we showed up and I was like I could care less <laughs> I didn't care right. I had this feeling of home mm-hmm. okay and so what else like um, when, when I say where was the feeling where did you feel it in your body oh like deep like very mm-hmm. I felt like a warm hug right I felt like so calm Mm -hmm. and I felt, um, very like something was like, uh, like a gentle wind was like Mm -hmm. pushing me. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I was just like being guided by someone, some ancestor, some, something was like, this is what you need to do. Right. Did you hear anything like almost like audible? Yeah. Okay. What did you hear? I, I heard go. Okay. Like something was literally telling me to do this. Okay. And I had nothing more than a feeling of like, I have to get out of Arizona. I have to get out of Arizona. Not as if I hated it, but it was Mm -hmm. like, if I stay here, Mm -hmm. this, this, and this are going to be my end. Wow. And I, I literally, I had nothing to go on with this mm-hmm. I had no like guidance I had no background I had no friends family nothing mm-hmm. no other than that that feeling that was it and that was a strong one though oh my gosh yeah mm-hmm. yeah it really really was um and I've only had it a few other times wow well I would love to know those other times Andrew and so Johnson Okay, he he's the other times or Mm-mm. another. No, okay. no, 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 no. Um, he's one other time. Mm-hmm. Like that day, I said, like the clouds parted and the sun came right, down. Right, right. That was that time. Um, teaching sixth grade. Okay. I look. I don't know how, why, nothing, but the year I spent teaching sixth grade, I was like, "This is it. This is what we're doing forever." Hmm. I really did. I really thought like, this is, this is going to work. This is it. I finally found the teaching process that I like. Oh, I see. Did you connect with the students in a a Mm -hmm. different way too? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's, um, a a time that we connect with most in our spirit, you know, like, like I, I I connect with teenagers and I think really deep more so than children. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my thing. Like I connect with them. Like, I think that was my awakening in that time in life, okay. you know, so, or it could have been a hard time in my life and I'm reaching back to, mm. to console that Lori in that time, Maybe. you know, so maybe, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I think, yeah. uh, and then the first time I was on the radio, that's my last time of feeling uh-huh. that like the first time I heard myself live on the radio, I was like, yo. <laughs> what <laughs> it was it was a like a crazy feeling but it was like okay keep doing this okay, keep doing cool. this keep doing that I hadn't got that um that approval that that go yet no <laughs> I hadn't heard it uh-uh. I'm just 
I'm just saying yes to a lot of things. Uh -huh. And so this is, this is me practicing being more of myself, like an expansion. Right. So I'm just deciding to grow. However, but yeah. I will tell you this. When you know the feeling, you know the feeling. Like mm -hmm. you really do. It almost feels like you're floating. Okay. Like I almost felt like I got off the bus, didn't really touch the ground and like floated to the the admissions building that day. I'm just glad you locked in with whatever that was because it it brought you your husband and so many different, yeah. um, I'm sure, lessons that has been learned, which is so, you know, I'm so curious about like. These are her. the uh -huh. few, these are the few times when I listen to myself. Okay. I don't know if you remember, I don't know what episode that was when I told you about like, I didn't trust myself, then listen to myself. Right. Those are the times when nothing else anybody could have said, done whispered to me questioned me and it wouldn't have worked right it wouldn't have worked but it's like the gaps in between those times are tumultuous mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. so up and down in between mm -hmm. those times mm -hmm. so it's like bloating my way to admissions great getting into the school going to the school <laughs> almost throwing it all away mm -hmm. being the tour guide for the state of Alabama and not going to class that's what I was talking about. That tour oh, guy first, because I was yeah. like, "It's some federal job." But no, 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 no. <laughs> that was a self-appointed. You work job. for it. Oh. <laughs> no, that was people were like, "I'm going home for the weekend. You want to go?" Yes. That is or crazy. my roommate would be like, "On a Tuesday, I think I'm going to go to the Gallery and Mall in Birmingham. You want to go?" I'm not doing anything. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I should have been in class. Um, yeah. So. Yes, I was doing all of those things instead. And then then the clouds parted and the sun mm -hmm. came down and then I saw Drew. Mm -hmm. So that it was great. Then you have like the rocky road of, okay, I'm going to fail out of school still or I'm just extremely unhappy. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So then it's like the rocky road of trying to figure out how do you graduate? Mm -hmm. Because it became a, a point of like, I cannot go back home. Right. So I think this was a story of you actually coming into yourself here. Tuskegee yeah. represented all of that, all of the shedding, all of the unlearning and then learning, you know, yeah. it it was a lot of that. And I think you came because at first when you went, you were just like, I'm, I'm just going to go to Arizona State and this mm -hmm. is what's going to happen. And and then when you got there, you're like, uh, uh, and it sounds like when that floodgate opened, you realize, I don't know if you realize why you didn't want to go back or realize that you didn't want to go back. I I think I knew I didn't want to go back. Um, I don't think I was paying attention to like, I hadn't mourned. I hadn't dealt with my dad's death. I hadn't dealt with like family drama, trauma, nothing. I didn't realize that I hadn't dealt with any of that until Drew came along. Okay. And so then how it did, was like, oh, shit, I wasn't dealing with any of this. I was like self-medicating by uh, doing all this other shit. Right. To feel better. I mm -hmm. see. So mm -hmm. how did how did meeting Drew help you come to terms with the fact that you hadn't mourned? Because Drew will make you talk. Ah. He will question you till you say it all and then he'll let you go. He'll let up after that. But he kind okay. of metaphorically pins you down until you tell him the truth. Okay, he wants to know you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I get so it. So it was, um, it was, it was, he, he was like putting a mirror up. And I was like, mm -hmm. wait, I'm not ready for this. And it was kind I of see. like, he was therapy before I could go to therapy. Yep. And of I course. didn't know I needed therapy. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and do any of us? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, because we're we're survivors at our core. Mm -hmm. All we we know how to survive. Right. We hadn't really known what thriving is, you know, yeah. and so now thriving is introduced to you. Yeah, you know. So it was um, I mean, it worked out the way it worked out. I wound up getting my life together and like just doing what I had to do and spending all of my time doing what I had to do and forgetting what I wanted to do. Right. But I mean, it 
got me job after job. It got me place after place. I, you know, after that time of being homeless with, with Drew and Chris, Mm -hmm. I'd never been homeless after that. (laughs) You know, it was just. (laughs) Wait, wait, when did that, when did that happen? Did that happen like right after I graduated or? No, no, no. That was right before. So that was my fifth year. Okay. So y'all moved off campus. We had moved off campus and we lived in the same like complex basically. Okay. Okay. And I was student teaching and you couldn't have like a regular job and student teach. Right. So I was like trying to secretly work Mm -hmm. and trying to secretly make some money because I'm like, you're not paying us for this. How am I supposed to live? How am I live? Yeah. Right. So I could not pay my rent and pay for gas and pay for food and pay for school supplies. I couldn't do all the things. All of that. Right. So it was like, whatever I could sacrifice is going to be sacrificed. Well, I'm not paying this $500, am I? So so um so I couldn't pay my rent so then I was yeah I was homeless with them thankfully I think I had like I know okay for some reason I didn't wash my clothes at my apartment so I had all my clothes with me because I was coming back from the laundromat so I didn't care that they had locked my house up Uh, when I went to their house I was like well at least I got my clothes so they locked you at your place? Oh yeah, it had like the little padlock and the little thing apro- across the door, and so you bet you got your your eventually major- I paid my stuff and mm-hmm. and got my my apartment back or whatever. It wasn't that big uh, of a deal. Little uh, Warhorse okay. Town, it okay. wasn't that bad. They That's didn't hilarious. like give the apartment away or call right. the sheriff and like evict you. They didn't do right. all that. They just they said, just, pay pay me my money, right? <laughs> pay me, and then we'll give you back the rest of your stuff. Yeah. So um. So, yeah, so I've never, you know, been in that precarious situation ever again because it, mm-hmm. it was a learning experience. Well, what did you learn? Uh, first of all, money management. What the hell? Yeah. yeah. And uh, do not do a job for free. Oh, uh, yeah. You can volunteer for free, but yeah. do not do a whole entire nine to five job for free ever. What the hell? Is that you You talking about your practicum? Yeah. But how can, I mean, because she got I students. I should have asked for a stipend. I should have asked for something because they should have known not to put anybody in that situation. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that, that yeah. I mean, that does make sense. Because I'm just thinking about when I was in grad school. Right. I had to do that whole thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And I couldn't work either because I had to do the, the but practice. But it doesn't make sense, right? Like, shouldn't you at least be getting like some kind of money you are yeah you would think because i almost lost my home yeah so exactly so I, I feel you and that's that's on a a, a, a single parent <laughs> right you know home you know so it's, yeah it's it's weird what we expect out of people it yeah anyway yeah. well so, I, but but i think that still speaks to your level of determination you know what i'm saying yes. like that you learned that your hustle was different your your econ your um your budgeting was different. Something yeah. was different. Yeah. Um, and if it's one thing I know about myself that has always been consistent, good, bad, other, any kind of day, depression, happiness, joy, anything. I'm persistent as hell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Almost to a fault. Right. I will do whatever it is. It's going to be complete. Whatever the thing is. Doesn't matter. If I said I'm going to do it, I'm pretty much going to do it. Wow. So I think, um, yeah, it's been a a long 17 years of do not go homeless. Do not go hungry. Do not put yourself in any kind of precarious situation. Do whatever it is that you have to do. So right. but that would that's that's huge. I'm yeah. glad you learned it there. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I'm do glad you think I... you would have. You think you would have learned that lesson if you would stay home? No. Right. No. Right. I don't, I don't think I would have learned that lesson being, and the University of Arizona is like two and a half hours Mm -hmm. from where I'm from. Mm -hmm. It's still a safety net. I don't think I could have learned if there was a safety net of like, well, my mom can just drive down here and pick me up and do whatever. Like the fact that you had to get on a plane. Mm -hmm. or if you drove we drove my car across country and it was like 36 straight hours mercy hell no 
what a blessing that you had a car to drive across. But you True. know, it's but the fact that you you went over there, in a sense, kind of like you, you could have had a safety net. But you, I can imagine some of this stuff your mom knew nothing about. Oh, she she just finds stuff out like now as we speak. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I kept I kept everything from her. Like, yeah. I don't right. know if it was out of abundance of like still living my childhood of don't don't embarrass us or I just didn't want her to tell me to come home oh wow after the plane ride the first day of her being like we can go back home it's fine you can just tap out you know whatever I was like that cannot be the option like I don't want to move home ever yeah so I'm I'm glad that your mom said that everything happens for a reason because I'm glad she said it, although she was saying it for her, she wasn't saying it for mm-hmm. you. <laughs> but at least you knew that there was an option just in case. Yeah. So that you can do what you needed to do. Because yeah. if she didn't say that, you know, I don't, it's like everything happens for a reason. Right. Because I don't know if I would respond to it. I would have like such a visceral reaction to it if it wasn't, if the invitation wasn't there. Thank you. So, Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, I can't go home because there's yeah. no welcome there, you know? Right, right. And yeah, and it makes me a little bit grateful too of her always being like, you can just come home. Any t- I, I could call her right now and she would mm-hmm. say it. So mm-hmm. it's it's good that that she's still that way, you know, and right. that our relationship right. is that way. That's um, nice. Because I know becomes- parents that are like, oh, hell no you know <laughs> well it be because there's a thing right mm-hmm. you have some children that invite the hell no right right so you 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 didn't invite that hell no from her yeah <laughs> you right. know and and it's beautiful to have an invitation mm-hmm. so they're saying something about you too that oh. there is an invitation to come okay. back home if need be it's saying a lot about who you are as a person you know yeah um so yeah Hmm. Hmm. so so yeah again because she could say hell no like she, she could, could not say she could have not said anything like oh what a relief I got this right. job off. I'm, I'm headed home I'm she booking trying to get back home right you know? like so. there's my headache child <laughs> that one's done you know like no she didn't she was yeah. like please yeah but I, I I think yeah and I I think also once I decided like, okay, I just got to graduate. I just got to do all these things. It became a point to me of like, I got to go back to getting the grades I was getting before I got here. Right. And when did that light come on? Because I know your freshman year, you were finding yourself, you were going through some stuff, you were doing the things um, and then grades started to fall apart. What was there? I'm I'm just, you know. Lori, that is the most gentle way to say a 1.87 GPA. Well, yeah. That's well, yes, be- yeah. be- because again, I, I got to practice what I speak about, right? I'm not going to judge it. Something was happening. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. There's, yes. A, there's a call and response. There's a, you know, <laughs> there's a call the, and a response to not go to class. But yeah. So, and, and there's a consequence to everything that happens, right? So there was a choice that was made yes. and there's something that happened as a result. So that's why I'm not going to judge the 1.9. Yeah. It came from a place. I'm glad you rounded it up. Um, they were not trying to round it up when they were like, we're going to take your scholarship money and you can go home. But I think um, number one, being on academic probation is terrifying when mm-hmm. you don't feel like you have a safety net. Right. I was putting that pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, n- not wanting to be one of those people that are like, I didn't graduate summa cum laude. I graduated. Uh, thank you, Lottie. Thank you, Lottie. I didn't yeah. want to be that. Yeah. Um, I like because that. I hadn't done that before. And mm-hmm. I was like, none of these classes are hard. Mm-hmm. N- none of this content is that difficult. Like right. do the work so we can be done and get I an see. A because you know how okay. to get A's. Oh, okay. Uh, so you had that conversation with yourself. Oh, I definitely did. And there were only two classes that I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Biology, because that's just not my cup of tea. And Mm -hmm. quantitative analysis, which Mm -hmm. is chemistry and physics and math together. 
that I just don't understand how anybody passes that on the first try. Mm -hmm. I just, I need to know how they did it because I definitely (laughs) didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's all the things that I love. I Mm -hmm. absolutely love chemistry, physics, and math, but that class was so difficult. Well, how did you get through it the second time? What did you get? What did I do the second time? The second time I know that I like really asked for help of like Mm -hmm. everybody I could find. I asked Mm -hmm. for help. Right. Um, I was already a good note taker. So it was like really paying attention to Mm -hmm. my notes. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I I really would like go to the professor and be like, okay, seriously. Mm -hmm. So it was more so relearning the stuff, Mm -hmm. but learning it in a way that I understood it. Right. That's huge. And so did you, did you make the kind of grades you wanted to make? Yeah. The second. Okay. So I got a, I got a, F the first I got an F in the class and a D in the lab the first time and I got a B in the class and a B in the lab the second time and and so wow first of all I think based on what you're saying you just put a whole hell of a lot of effort into it yeah you you know that coaching yourself yeah was who knew about the academic probation other than you No one, because sneaky me, I changed my mailing address from my home mailing address to my PO box at school. So definitely not anybody that would know. So no. And you did this as a freshman. I did everything as a freshman. I was let let me tell you. Oh, you weren't you weren't terrible. Okay, I'm I'm telling you why. I'm not I'm not judging this because to say terrible is to say you were bad. Like you were mischievous and you were into this and you were into that. I was all of those things. I know. I know. Uh, but understand, it was out of curiosity. <laughs> Your curiosity was piqued. You were you are a fish out of water. You came from Arizona uh, in a place where you only saw yourself a couple of times. Right. Yeah. <laughs> to a place where you saw yourself multiple times, you know. In a and, variety and, if, and you were just like, oh, oh, this apple, yes. mm, that mango. Ooh. Yes. This, you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. So if you if you reframe that, you were excited so much and you and you had a lot of different stories. You had to catch up, my dear. I you had okay. to catch up. Definitely and had then, that. Right. And then catching up, your distraction was so great that your grades were compromised. Yes. And then you got jerked. <laughs> Except I took a lasso and snapped your neck. It's like I mean, <laughs> honestly, from August to May, it was just like, ah, and yeah. then they were like, um, ma'am. Right. Put your what ass were together. You doing? <laughs> right? Like, huh? Like, what's going so on? I, went, I had to go to summer school every single year. You know how expensive summer school is? It's just learning lessons. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, but guess what? It was worth it. It had to be. Yeah, it had to be. And, and and when you think back on Tuskegee, would you do it again? Oh, my God. Tomorrow. Like, let me get my bags. Thank you. That's I would live in the saying. dorm again. I would do everything. Oh my goodness. I would do yes. all of it again just so I could do it better. And just so I would have the memories. So I definitely don't know if I would have changed my major. And I, OK, hear me out when I say I don't know if I would change my major. Because I was doing my practicum, I wasn't on campus. Mm hmm. So a lot of stories that people tell, they're like, you weren't there, were you? And I'm like, no, I was in Auburn. (laughs) So you're saying you would change your major then or? I I think I would have changed my major to just flat out chemistry or just flat out physics. Like I would have just Mm -hmm. picked one Mm -hmm. and stuck with it. And like, this is what I'm going to do just so I would have had the option to like experience school more Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because even freshman year I didn't really experience school I experienced Alabama like like I legitimately did like I know I-65 like right I know it (laughs) top to bottom like from Florence to Mobile you know like Huntsville to Bay Manette I know all the parts I bet yeah (laughs) I wish I didn't 
but I do. Well, no wells. Mm-mm, Lori, no, we're not claiming this one. Mm-mm. Nope. I should have had my ass on campus and that should have been it. Okay. Mm-mm. It's it. I'm... Okay. See, I have an issue with the shoulds. I know you do. You always have. I know you do. You have adverse words. And I know that's one of them. But come on now. Well, it's not so much that they're adverse words. They don't exist. That's okay. why I'm, I'm not I'm not saying, oh, this is the that. word everybody needs. You, I'm saying should doesn't even exist. No. You did that shit. How can you should not? Like, you, you did it, you know? Yeah. And so, and you learned from it. Like, every little... Everything happens for a reason. It didn't yes. just happen. Now, maybe in that moment, if that moment ever were to occur again, you might decide differently, right? Oh, but absolutely. You, but that's the knowing now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the knowing now says, man, if I've ever been presented with this thing again, I would do this differently. Yeah. Because that's all you got. Yeah. That's one reason why I'm saying that. Okay. But yes, I would do it again. Um, I think I would do a lot of different things again. I mean, a lot of those things again. I was still teaching the one horse town. I would still follow the boy mm-hmm. to Decatur. I would, I would still, I would still do a lot of. I would still go to right. Abu Dhabi. I just See, would. Yeah, and but there, but guess what? Like you're saying, there are things that you would do differently, though, right? Yes, there are right. like small tweaks would make totally different paths. Oh, absolutely. With those small tweaks, like not even right. anything drastic. Yeah, nothing like hugely dressed. Right. I mean, down to like apartments. There are places I would I would live again, even though I know it's like this is sketch. Mm-hmm. I would still do it. I hear you. I would still and, do it. And even speaking about the thing you said, going back and forth, um, man, there's some stuff I wouldn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Even if presented with that, you might not do it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If had well, the option to do it again, you see what I'm saying? So yeah, you would just choose choose differently. Yeah, I. I think one of the main choices that I would have is that I would get out of teaching way quicker. There, There's just no way. But I say that and I'm like, dang, Abu Dhabi might not happen. So then I'm like, mm. okay, would I get out of teaching or would I know when to leave the party and leave this particular school? I think uh, it's more I would leave that school. Right, right. So, uh, how? Yeah. Um. I think I would have like paid attention and been like, okay, either figure out how to get out of the classroom and mm-hmm. do this other particular thing that you're good right. at. Like I'm, I'm, right. I'm going to do my own horn. I'm pretty good at testing. Anything right. that has to do with standardized testing. Mm-hmm. I would have just tried to figure that out. Right. Right. Um, or I would have said, okay, this principal is leaving and going to this school. And I really like this principal, like figure out how to go with that principal. Exactly not and, stay in this situation because it's a it's a for sure situation right even though it right. was a horrible, horrible situation. situation yeah because it's like tapping into the skills that you had when you right. decided to go to these different schools in high school and say i'm gonna meet everybody i'm gonna be friends with everybody. like i'm i'm gonna be friends with this principal i'm gonna find out how i can yeah. be his best teacher <laughs> right but you know <laughs> a lot of that was lost mm-hmm so that girl who was just like, drop me wherever and do whatever in the time that I moved here the very mm-hmm. first time, it was such a precarious situation and it I was see. quite, um, it was learning just cause they look like you doesn't mean they're for you. Right. So that's a different learning than right. jumping on the scene at Tuskegee, like, Right. Oh, the heavens parted. Oh, right. and, and no. ushering in by the ancestors. And yeah, this wasn't that. This right, wasn't you had, that. Right, you had to actually, learn, but you had to receive that first to yeah. then find out that everybody that looked like you ain't for you. Yeah, but these, what if you found that out first and then saw the love? Yo, letter? if I would have found that out first, um, it it would have made it easier. Oh, really? It would have made it so much easier and I would not have stayed. Oh, you wouldn't have stayed in Tuskegee? No, no, no. um, I wouldn't have stayed in Decatur. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I wouldn't have stayed in Decatur because I would have known my worth and I would have known I didn't have to take that shit. Ah. But some part of me had like um, 
what is it munchausen's when you believe that you're supposed to be tortured and it's supposed to uh uh um like i was gonna say a stiff for wife but i know what you're talking about you i can't think of what it's called mm-hmm. whatever it is when the abuser is abusing you and you mm-hmm. still love them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah whatever that was if i would have known oh wow uh-huh. I, I think i definitely honestly uh, the number one thing that i know that i should always have in my tool belt is therapy Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if I would have, because I started going to therapy back then and the therapist didn't look like me mm-hmm. and the therapist were like, you need medication. And I was like, absolutely not. And you're not listening. And then the, the second therapist was just like, oh, just try not to think about it like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I literally needed a Lori back then to be like, fuck that, fuck them, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I think I think if I would have just known my worth. Speaking of that, mm-hmm. did you have any of that kind of training at Tuskegee about like self uh worth, um, you know, self love, anything like that? No. No. Not from like professors or anything like that. Maybe. Or classes? No. Mm-mm. Hmm. No. And the crazy thing is, like, they offer like mental health and services and stuff like that now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, look at the times. The times have changed. Because back then it was just like, this is what you're getting. This is right. the experience. Exactly. You know, we just yeah. in those hard times together. Right. And you just kind of took it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like that too when my took my daughter back to she went to my alma mater and I mm-hmm. said, They have a counseling service there. Right. You right. know, and I'm but I'm glad they have it. And right, by but the you're way, like we were supposed to suffer. <laughs> but <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. No. Like so even like our parents, they suffered. You right. know, when you think about some of the things that these young ladies had to endure, yes. uh fathers having them uh, you know, getting them pregnant all kind of shit right. uncles messing with the you know mm-hmm. and they held those secrets yeah. right and so there's a breaking in that cycle with us in the sense where we're telling them secrets you know we're yeah. exposing these motherfuckers we're exposing mm-hmm. all of the things all the abusers all the mm-hmm. the things so i think it's a it's just a coming of age and i'm so glad um an evolving of things that this is happening happening that we have these uh counselors we needed them we needed them then but you know we definitely need them now (laughs) i'm glad that they have them now because i can't even imagine being in college right now i can't i just my goodness i can't even imagine starting teaching right now can you imagine Mm. if your first year teaching was the first year of covid i I wonder if so many dropped out you know absolutely yeah. But what I'm gonna jump in and what that was called is Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm. You know? Thank yeah. you. I don't know what, Thank you. How, Not Munchausen. Right, right. So uh, but Stockholm syndrome. Yes. And it's so weird because some things are right on the tip of your tongue, you know, and then it just just goes out. But, but um but that portion coincides with Drew and I not being engaged. Oh. people being in my ear people yeah. bantering about that and then oh wow so it's 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 the beginning of the time of me beginning to feel like I wasn't enough and not good enough I see and, and um, that so, has carried its way forward even I to see. this day oh wow anything now that's helping when you think back on that to kind of heal it I'm still here. Okay. That's, that's I'm, healing it. I know I'm not supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. There right. were too many times where it was going down bad. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you, mm-hmm. blessed and highly favored. Look at that. Because at that. I know for a fact I'm not supposed to be here. Wow. There. It- it was so many times that I was trying to intervene in what the higher power was telling me not to do. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you're not okay. supposed to do that. You know right. what I'm saying? I feel you. I so, totally feel you. Mm-mm. And and I'm also thinking about the times that you were dealing, um, you know, we were talking with Drew and, and how 
life was going before you got married. Imagine you knew and you right. totally understood what the deal was. How how do you think that would have impacted what you're dealing with Decatur and Abu Dhabi? I think it would have been breezy. Mm-hmm. I think I think I would have been breezy. I think um I think the time in Abu Dhabi would have been a little bit smoother. I don't know. I cannot say if certain situations that happened in Abu Dhabi that made it even worse would have still happened if I knew. Mm -hmm. I don't know because I can't control everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so me feeling better. I'm just speaking about how your demeanor yeah. And how you, because it's how we perceive a thing. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know if, if my perception, my outlook, m- my knowing my value, my worth, if I would have known all of that, would certain things that still happen? I don't know. Um, Or even how you dealt with them. Oh, I still would have dealt with them the same way I dealt with them. <laughs> oh, really? No, your worth? Okay. 100% I was still dealt with them the same okay. way um, okay. because those things hurt me to my core. Right. But I'm speaking about you knowing your worth. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, but those things were so devaluing, Lori. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if there was enough armor. I see. To, to be like, ah, oh, fuck it. It doesn't matter. That's no, do it. I don't know if okay. they were if if there was enough armor for that. Okay, well, tell me who you are today. Um, would would there be enough armor today to deal with something like that if it were to come up? One situation, yes. The other, no. Okay. Okay. Mm-mm. No. No. Oh. Uh, okay, but here's the thing: the two are related. They are entangled with each other, mm-hmm. as it was put to me. Okay. So I f- maybe I would be able to deal with it better because mm-hmm. I think if I would have been able to deal with the first situation, the second situation might not have happened. Okay. Okay. So I don't know. Um, but those things, yeah, because because year after year there was always something or someone or some situation to chip away at me feeling like I'm doing enough, I'm doing a good job, I'm okay, whatever. Um, I carried that bag. Mm-hmm. I think that's I honestly am not a bag lady of like multiple bags. I'm a bag mm-hmm. lady of one heavy bag of are you enough? Mm-hmm. Right. And I think you think that started in college or did it start before that then I think that it was after I really honestly think it's not my first year of teaching it's my second year of teaching which is my first year in Georgia Mm -hmm. okay and tell me what if you had it then like what Uh would you have needed to kind of help you you know, it could have been support from a friend. It could have been a class. You you see what I'm saying? It could have been a book. You know, like, as you think about what can help somebody now when they're going through something similar. I needed therapy. Okay. I needed honest therapy. I needed the kind of therapy that you provide. I'm not, like, trying to hype you up, sell you nothing. Mm-hmm. I needed someone with a, a perspective of, a Lori perspective of, like, fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I I did not have anybody in my corner. Right. You know how how Drew and I talk about we have a council now mm-hmm. right. that we can go to and go. Are we tripping? Or is this situation fucked up? Like we didn't right. have that. I definitely okay. didn't have that. Right. And I didn't even have just one person to go to to be like, yo. Right. This lady literally is doing this to me. Like, what do I do? Right, but th- you didn't even know that you needed it, did you? Or did uh, you? No, I knew I needed it because that's the, uh, that's what I tried. Okay. And it, 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 it just wasn't working. No. So okay. I thought, I really honestly thought that was the only therapy. Ah, okay. I only, I thought that like, those were the only options. You get the white man with the pen and the pad to write you a prescription, mm-hmm. or you get the white lady or the older lady 
who is out of touch with reality. Right. Who is just like, just don't think about it that way. That's not what I needed. I don't know if I needed a soundboard or I needed a hype man. I don't know what I needed, but I know I didn't need somebody to just kind of like glaze over the situation. Right. Well, dismiss it. You didn't need anybody to dismiss it. Yeah. And both of them kind of dismissed in a way because Mm -hmm. to tell me that I needed to be medicated was like. Well, well, that's a big ass dismiss. That's right. I'm going to be able to handle it in a way that I really can't handle it. Like I'm going to really need some real help. And that real help is synthetic. It's not even a part of who I am. So I'm going to let something enter me to push me to limits that I don't need to be pushed to. And especially if I sat down and said, this is the main thing I do not want to do. I do not want to be medicated ever. Mm -hmm. Right. And you automatically just go with like, yeah, you need medication. Did you take it? No. Oh, good for you. I left the session right there. Oh, look at you. No, but that was what I thought. What that was, you know, this is what my insurance covered. These are the people that my insurance said was the option. Right. So that was all I thought I could do. That was all I thought was like, this is what I'm worth. Right. I get it. And you, and, and I would even say you didn't know what you didn't know. And a lot of us don't know that we have options because we haven't taught, we haven't been taught that we have a choice. No. And, and that, and I know um, it's biblical, but it's in it's so many things mm-hmm. that we have a choice. We get yeah. to choose and we're so powerful. And I, I just want to say that we're powerful people. And in fact, we're, we're spiritual beings having a, a human experience. Mm-hmm. So we are powerful from the word go. We just forgot it. And yeah. it's just time to wake up and recognize we're right. very, very powerful. We have a choice. We matter. You know, like that's that's huge. Yeah. And I'm I'm just glad this is in a sense it's kind of coming full circle. You right. know, I think it's it's um a little bit more awake, a little bit more awake, a little bit more awake. Yeah. Some yeah. days I kind of like I said I revert back, mm-hmm. but for the most part, yeah, it's just steps forward. They might be like half steps. Yeah, I'd stumble a little bit forward, but yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, I truly believe, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't know, I had no clue. Yeah, I thought I was doing what I had to do. I yeah. thought I was doing whatever options were there. I thought I was doing what was best for the yeah. situation, for us, and you, for and whoever. You used all of the skills that you had from a young child, you 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 threw everything in the mix. So yeah, like you even to to the point where you getting up and walking out of therapy. That's boss. Yeah. Like some people will sit and kind of docile and they don't know because no. they've been taught to be so obedient to sit there and take this shit. And you were like, no, you had some kind of righteous indignation in you. A little so, bit. Yeah. Yeah. Some, so there's that's always huge. been since, since the little kid in fourth grade calling me the N word, there's always been this little bit of like black women are too powerful for this. Like, right. We're not you dealing see- with this. So right. in those situations when I'm backed into those kind of corners, mm-hmm. I'm like, what do I look like? I'm not doing that. Right. So I think adversity, even though we hate it, mm-hmm. it pushes us to be better people if we don't yeah. sink under it. Yeah. So what? how can you sum it up? How can you sum up how you turned it around in your freshman year or how you got there and turned around to be who you are today? Persistence. Okay. There is some part of me Drew says it all the time. We're not going back in the house. Okay. <laughs> you go back in the house and you sit down. You're not getting anything done. Right. You have to go through whatever it is to get on the other side of this. Right. So I just feel like you have to persist. You don't have to struggle. Right. That's totally different. Mm-hmm persistence means you got to sit with whatever and figure it out okay struggling means you're just moving you're just touching stuff you're just doing stuff that's not helping right find a sense of direction Mm -hmm. find a sense of guidance Mm -hmm. um figure out like a different way but you have to go you have to you have Mm -hmm. to go forward you have to move with a purpose 
Mm-hmm. I had yesterday. I had Marcus Garvey's uh, shirt on, mm-hmm. and he, and his shirt said "Get Up and Do." Yes, I was so moved. You know, even just having the shirt on, just yeah. reading it, it's like you got to do it. You got to get up and do. You got to, like you said, persist. Mm-hmm. Like keep pressing forward. Yeah, because I'm also a firm believer. Okay, we know I'm not like super religious, but I am extremely like spiritual. And I do believe in the power of our ancestors. And I 100% believe like somebody else went through way worse. Hell am I complaining about? Yes, this is rough. Yes, this is a lot. Yes, this is like not cool. Whatever's happened with me. Mm -hmm. But like somebody went through a hell of a lot more to get me to this point. So Mm -hmm. me trying to go back in the house and wallow, Mm -hmm. it's not going to work anymore. Right, it did it right. for a long time and it didn't get me anywhere or get me anything that I wanted. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm not willing to necessarily do that. You got to persist. I hear you. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you for actually wanting to hear my story. That's, oh yeah. I don't I, think I, I really shared that with other people. I want to share and, and, and I want to share my stuff. So people understand that they're not alone. We're not yeah. alone. You know, and and if there was ever a time that you felt alone before, if you're going through anything again, know that you're not alone. Yeah. Although we live in this world alone, because, you know, I'm that person who will tell you we live in our own world and our own dream. We mm-hmm. we live inside our own mind. So everything is pertaining to us. Mm-hmm. However, there's a lot of us. Yeah. You know, and so with that being the case, everything that I go through as an individual, everything you go through as an individual somebody is going through that at some point it might not be exactly but it's similar Mm -hmm. so so you sharing your story is giving and thank you for that gift of giving because you're you were vulnerable you didn't have to share this shit like this is your this is your shit like you know but for you to give is so is rich because somebody's is going through a, a college student or somebody who's a parent and worried about their child and to say to that child I, you know, I'm here if you need mm-hmm. me and yeah. not trying to get dig all in, you know, and, and, and just trust my child is going to be okay. Yeah. Somebody needs to hear this. I, I think, I hope so too, because I know what it feels like to be extremely lonely. I get it. And Ooh, too. in that like mm. solitude moment of like, I have no one, I have nothing, even though mm. I have a person, mm-hmm. it's, he has his own thing and I have my own and it's sometimes still to this day it feels like dark room in a dark corner by myself right I, I I really want you to say though real quickly how you made it out though every time you said I shouldn't be here how how are you here what would mm-hmm. you say is the reason you're here because I make the choice every day to be here okay Okay. And what, what do you say? I'd rather be here than not, or uh, it's important uh, for me to be here. I no. deserve to be here. What do you say? That all of this is a bonus. And you take all the wins that you can get because we were losing before we were taking L's mm-hmm. before. So this is a bonus and appreciate the bonus because okay. I'm going to say it one more time. I am blessed and highly favored. Okay. That's I don't cool. always show it, but I know yeah. it. Okay. Well, that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Lori. Thanks to everybody for listening. All right. See y'all. That's it for this week's show. I'm Lori Scott. And I'm Sylvia Johnson. And you've been listening to What's Been Better. A big thank you to Lagan Music Inc. for providing our music. This show is edited and produced by us with a little help from our family and friends. We love you all. We want to hear what's been better for you. To be a guest on the show, send us an email to questions at what's been better.com. Or you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at what's been better podcast. Thanks for listening.